We had some technical difficulties, but we think we're ready to go now. Welcome to this presentation, which we have entitled New York State of Mind. Our goal today is to highlight New York State and specifically the region where our colleges are located and to share some interesting facts about our campuses, which will help our prospective students get a feel for our campus life and the opportunities in our part of New York State. My colleagues and I are first going to introduce ourselves. My name is Arlene Spencer. I'm the Director of International Student and ESL Programs at Fulton Montgomery Community College, which is located in the central part of upstate New York near the capital city of Albany. And I'm Jackie Vogel. I'm the Associate Vice President for Global Education at SUNY Plattsburgh. And Plattsburgh is located in the northeast corner of New York State, just south of Montreal, Canada. Hi everyone, I'm Jody Rossi. I'm the Associate Director of International Admissions at Paul Smith's College. And Paul Smith's is located right in the middle of Fulton Montgomery County and SUNY Plattsburgh in upstate New York. As I mentioned earlier, our campuses are located in a similar part of New York State. So I invited my colleagues to talk about how their campuses may be a good fit for students who want to start their undergraduate education either at Fulton Montgomery Community College and then transfer to one of their campuses or to attend one of their colleges directly from high school. Yeah, so I think the first thing we want to talk about is that, um, you know, give you a sense of geography. And I think a lot of people know where New York is. I think you can find it on this map pretty easily. Um, you don't probably find New York City because it's just a little dot. And let's just look at that a little more closely on the next slide. So New York State is actually quite a large state. Um, and New York City is in the bottom corner. It's that sort of pink area in the bottom. And what you see here is where Johnstown is located, which is where Fulton Montgomery is found. And then Paul Smith's is, as Jody mentioned, kind of in between. And then Plattsburgh is above that. And on the left-hand side, you can see the drive times between New York City and each of our campuses. And Plattsburgh, if you went a little farther north, would be Montreal, Canada, so which is about an hour away. So we are quite far from New York City. That's time. It's uh, that's probably the thing. There are times it's, it's a pros and cons kind of situation. Um, so it's uh, that's the map of New York State. And once you get outside the city of New York, much of the state looks more like this than it does what you think about when you think about New York. So um, I know for many of us, being outside um, is one of our best things in upstate New York. So there's skiing, Niagara Falls up there on the left-hand side, kayaking on the many rivers and lakes, hiking. Um, you'll see people there um, standing next to a tree. And if you've never seen this, you're, my question, why are they standing next to that tree? And they are tapping maple trees for maple syrup. Um, there's also a wonderful uh, park, a recreation park called Great Escape um, in the center of the state. So, it is not at all what you might imagine, but it's, it's an amazing place, upstate New York. So this is just to give you a sense of scale. Um, New York City, if you notice, is um, 11,000 square kilometers. That is 1% of the landmass of New York State. Uh, and it's actually one of the most densely populated cities in the, in the world. Um, it is when you look at it, it's, it's about 57% of the population live outside of New York City, 43% live inside New York City. If you have a chance um, and you get to click on that link on the bottom, you'll see very interesting statistics on the most densely populated cities in the world. Um, maybe you'll see some from other cities there. Next slide. All right, everyone. So speaking of universities, there's three of us here. We're all very different. 
And we're going to give you a little bit of an idea of the different type of choices you have in institutions in the United States. But with almost 5,000 schools in the U.S. to choose from, how in the world do you find something that is the right fit for you? And, and that's where people like Jackie, Arlene, and myself come into this. So we work as admissions counselors. It's, it's our job to share this type of information with you about our schools and, and help you try to narrow down your choices. And so I'm gonna give you a little introduction to some of the, the few options that you have. And hopefully this will help you narrow down some of your choices, think about what questions to ask yourself and think through when you wanna start looking at schools in the United States. And so you can choose from um, quite a different type of school. There's a two-year school, which is where Arlene works. Um, but then our four-year school, Paul Smith's, also has two-year degrees. There are public schools, there are private, there are specialty schools focused on music or art. Think about if you want a small population of students, medium or a big large school, you can have everything from 800 students to 20,000 students on a campus. And the location's really important. Is it somewhere that is interesting to you, that's going to have the things that you're interested in and can support those things? So do you, would you rather be in an urban city or a suburb? maybe a small town or rural campus. And a lot can depend on what you wanna study as well and what makes sense for where those locations are. And I think as you learn more about our programs, you'll see how that's a fit. Do you learn best in large classes, lecture style classes, or small conversation-based classes? Think about your learning style and maybe you need a little bit of a mix of both. And so some of the other things to consider once you narrow down maybe the state and the size of the school you're interested in and making sure schools in those states have the programs you're interested in, you want to start looking at the campus facilities. Do you want to live on campus or do you want to commute? And schools have different rules regarding this. And um, so learning what the school's rules are is important as well. How important is the food to you? It's, I, for me, it's the biggest transition I hear international students talk about is getting used to the food or if you have a special diet if you have allergies or you're vegan or vegetarian do there need to be handicap accessibility buildings are you interested in a gym and a swimming pool and what type of sports do you want to play and how important is that and what about the clubs we're mostly residential campuses which means we offer all of these options and a lot of the things are going to be similar but there'll be little differences as well then you have to think about academically what you're looking for as well. What is the teaching and learning environment? And as you learn about our three different campuses, you'll see that we operate a little differently. Are you interested in the internships, research, service learning, studying abroad? What type of support for tutoring? And maybe like you're like me and you struggled in math class and you're going to need that extra tutoring in college. And you want to make sure those facilities and options are available for you. And then of course the cost. You're looking at having to plan your budget for four years. And in the United States, tuition doesn't typically stay static. There are usually small percentage of increases every year. So thinking about not just tuition and housing and meals, but what about transportation and clothes and entertainment? And you're not gonna wanna eat at the cafeteria every single day for every meal. You want to be able to get out and have some money as well to do things. And and so what type of financial aid is the school offering you? Are they scholarships? Do you have to have an SAT for the scholarship or is it SAT optional? Do they offer loans and grants? And, um, and think about what's available in your country as well and do some research to see what's available to help fund um, your education. How long is it likely to take you to graduate based on your goals and your plans? And then really think about these things and put them in um, an order of importance. I think that's, that's an important factor. And consulting with informed helpers, I, I think that's great advice. And that's where reaching out to colleges, mm -hmm. talking to the three of us and asking us for information. We're here to answer those questions. We're here to connect you with faculty and with other students so that you can get a real feel for the campus um, because we know it's unlikely you'll be able to visit and it's a big decision. And so we're here to support those efforts. 
Thank you, Jody. And so now let's talk about the names of our campuses. My school is Fulton Montgomery Community College because the local communities of Fulton and Montgomery counties in New York State share the financial responsibilities for the institution. Community colleges are two-year public education campuses which offer the associate's degree and in a variety of majors. In New York State, we have two types of public uh, university systems and FM is part of SUNY, the State University of New York, which is a big family of public colleges and universities in a, a part of New York State, which is primarily north of New York City. So this slide is a picture from the entrance of my campus, our famous clock tower, which is a symbol of Fulton Montgomery Community College. We are a small college with only about 2,500 students. As I mentioned, we're near the capital city of Albany, New York, which is the capital government seat of New York State. We have about 40 programs and a variety of majors, including those in the arts, business, computer science, criminal justice, um, electrical technology, entertainment technology, health, media arts, sports management, and many more. We enjoy international students from all over the world, and we would be happy to welcome you. Jody. Can you please explain why your college is called Paul Smith College, where you are located, and the types of degrees that you offer? Sure. Our location really drives everything about Paul Smith College. Paul Smith was a man who, <clears throat> excuse me, built a environmental focused resort on the same property that the college currently sits on back in the 1850s. Our location's really unique because we're the only four-year college that's located within a state park. So you actually live and learn in the natural, the largest naturally protected land area in the entire United States. So there's protected land, there's a lot of tourist towns, we're a big tourist cities around us, small cities, but a lot of it. And, um, and Paul Smith, his whole focus was introducing people to the environment, protecting the environment and the wilderness and the wildlife around it, and supporting business as it grew in this area. And so our um, majors typically focus on biology, environmental science, sustainability, disaster management and response, human health and the environment. Those are our big, big majors, but also a lot to do with hospitality and tourism, a lot of business, sports management, and, um, and culinary as well. And you'll see that all of those segments fit into what it took to run Paul Smith's resort. And, and so that's why we have the culinary aspect and the tourism and hospitality. It really fits our park and it fits the location and supports the region really well. But we partner with um, other parks and natural resource conservation areas around the world. And so you're never limited to just our campus. You can work and partner with parks in Italy, Nepal, South Africa, We've been a leader in green environmental education for about 80 years now. Jackie, where is your campus and what are some interesting facts about it? Hey, Sarlene. So um, our campus is uh, in Plattsburgh, New York. So all of the SUNY campuses are named really after the place that they're located. Um, what makes us unique um, in many ways is the global diversity of our campus. We have 60 countries um, represented on our campus this past spring, um, and they are countries from all over the world. And so students really make their home here in Plattsburgh. And, and what's remarkable is the amount of leadership roles our students take. Um, we have a student association, which is really the, the organization that runs the campus and decides what activities happen. And more than half of the executive board are made up of international students, even though only about 6% of our student body is international. So our international students really have made a huge impact on the campus. Um, and they are, there are thousands of alumni who support our current students as well. So we love um, the global diversity and the, um, 
the energy that our international students bring to our campus. So for majors, um, thank you both sort of highlighting your majors. And I know that um, at Arlene School at Fulton Montgomery, there are a lot of programs that lead into a two plus two environment. Many of the programs listed here. So on the left, you'll see the most pop popular programs for all of our international students. Things like accounting, very, our School of Business and Economics is internationally accredited. Um, the STEM fields are also very popular these days. Things like biochemistry, biomedical sciences, which is a pre-med program, business administration, computer science, Economics, which it's unusual that it's a STEM designated program. And that's because it's very quantitative in nature. And so if you come to Plattsburgh and you major in economics, you would actually be considered a STEM student um, at marketing and psychology. But on the other side, you have some programs that are maybe a little more unique, most unusual. Um, the art program is a professional art degree. So a lot of our students who graduate from there go on to make their their living. They earn their actual money to live um, from being an artist, which I think people find remarkable. Um, I think it's wonderful. Computer security, entrepreneurship, um, expeditionary studies, which is learning how to trek in various parts of the world, and they do that. They trek in Nepal and in Japan, all over the world. Fitness and wellness is for students who want to combine their own sort of interest in fitness and and sports with um, a business component, uh, multimedia journalism, online accounting. So if you go to Fulton Montgomery and you start your accounting or your business administration degree there, and then you decide it's time to go home, you can continue and finish your SUNY bachelor's degree through our online accounting program. So what's remarkable is the diversity of choices you have, and you can combine all of these things together um, and make your degree program yours. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. And at FM, we do pride ourselves uh, as a campus who really care about our students. And so this slide shows you some of the activities that you could take part in if you were a student at Fort Montgomery. Obviously, we have strong athletic programs, internships, we take trips with our students. Uh, we are a campus, a community college with a dormitory, which is slightly unusual. Uh, but our students, uh, usually we have about 300 students living on campus. This year, we're going to reduce that to only 100 students so that we're able to social distance. And we'll talk more about that in the future uh, presentation. But I wanted to say that FM is highly ranked. We're not only one of the top two-year community colleges in New York State, we're also highly ranked nationally for our online degree programs. So there's a lot to offer at our campus. Jody, what is your what is campus like at Paul Smith? Sure. Well, we're what's called an experiential campus, and that means that we do about half of the classroom instruction out of the classroom. So we're great for the type of student who does better hands on. And so you may have lecture style classes on Tuesday, but on Thursday, you're going to be out. And if you're doing a business degree, then you're working with a local business on their marketing plan or social media. Um, you can see in the picture in the bottom left corner, that's a class. And so uh, when you step out of your dorm every morning, you're in what's considered a living laboratory by the state of New York. Our entire 14,000 acre campus is a living laboratory. And so our students are responsible for collecting the data and monitoring the environment, the waterway, the rivers, the mountains, and the wildlife that live on our campus, and collecting that data and reporting it back to the state and to the federal government as we um, continue to monitor climate change. And so we're very hands-on. We're residential. We're also a really small school. We're only about 900 students, and that's why it's important that we're residential. All of our students are going to live on campus all four years with us. And, and that's because we want to have an active community. And it's also because being an experiential school, it means that sometimes, like in the picture on the bottom left, you have to go out and do some school stuff when it's not regular school hours. And so sometimes you need to be able to go out at night or you need to be able to go out early in the morning. But because of that, we have a really robust campus community 
and it makes it a lot of fun to live there. Also, because we're in a big tourist area, we have all these great tourist towns, but there's really not an urban area for students to live. There's not apartment communities and, and things like that where students can live. So it is much easier for everyone to be on campus. Um, a couple of things that we're really proud of is having very small classes. Uh, usually 15 to 1 student to faculty ratio. When you get in higher level labs and independent classes, it might just be you and two or three other people with the professor. And also, we're now offering a graduation guarantee. And this means that if you aren't able to finish your degree in four years, but you've maintained good academic progress and you're taking all the classes you need to, then we're going to go ahead and support you and let you complete that degree at no tuition charge. And so we really want you to, to take advantage of the abundance of classes that we offer. We pretty much guarantee we're going to get you out in four years, but if you switch majors or you take your time a little bit, that's okay too. We want to support that whole journey. Jackie, how about SUNY Plattsburgh? Yeah, so um, not unlike your campuses, we have a very rich campus life. Um, and it's really 24-7. It's always something going on. Um, we are literally surrounded by the Plattsburgh community. Um, the, the campus is literally in the middle of the city. Um, so you can walk 15 minutes and be in downtown and there's a jazz club and there's an arts theater and there's some really wonderful restaurants. One of the nice uh, features of having been enrolled international students for so long is that it seems our, camp our community has really embraced foods from other cultures. And so tonight we had dinner from the number one restaurant in, uh, in the entire city and that is Himalaya. And they serve Nepali, Bhutanese and uh, well, there's another one, I can't think of it, Tibetan food. So that would never have happened had we not had a large multicultural population in our community. But once you get out of campus and once you get out of Plattsburgh, it's really the outdoors for all of us is our playground. Um, and so there's always things going on out there as well, hiking and kayaking. If you come back on campus, there are sports activities that you can get involved in, either as a participant or as a um, spectator. Uh, the big ones for us are hockey, uh, women's hockey, not men's hockey. Women's hockey is number one and it has been number one for seven out of the at last eight years. So if you want to see a really exciting hockey game and likely to win, you go to the women's hockey game. Uh, we also have lots of cultural groups and um, musical groups for students who are interested in singing or performing. Um, and there's a campus shuttle that goes through campus every, I think it's every 20 minutes, it's free. And it takes you up to the, the shopping areas, to Target and to the mall. Um, so you can uh, enjoy some of the local flavor there. So uh, it's really, the fact that we're right in the center of Plattsburgh makes it a very easy uh, way to get, really immerse yourself in the community. Um, you can have your life on campus, but there's a life going on outside of campus and you are welcome to join it. Okay, we're going to switch the conversation now to costs. Um, a lot of people, when they hear New York State, they think of New York City and the expensiveness of living in Manhattan, but that is not the case in upstate New York, where we are located. Uh, at Fulton Montgomery, uh, we are promoting a new scholarship that we're offering to students starting this fall. It is a guaranteed scholarship that we give to all students, which will greatly reduce your cost of attendance to a very affordable amount. In fact, with the scholarship, you will be paying the same as a New York State student. So you can see on my screen that, um, that what the co annual cost of attendance, which would include your tuition, fees, housing, and food, everything that you need to be a student uh, is listed there. Um, and the, I had mentioned before our great location being in central upstate New York. We're between New York City, Boston, Montreal, and Toronto. So within just a few hours, you can be in four major world cities. We're also only about seven or eight hours from Washington, D.C. Uh, uh, because we are an open admission institution, we will admit students with a high school degree, or we have um, a special early admission program for motivated students who might be 
uh, not yet getting their high school degree, but want to come and study early. And that's called early admission. And that's something that I did as a student and at my, my own children did as students here at Fulton Montgomery. And before I had mentioned our high ranks um, as both the top community colleges and also top for our online degree programs. Okay, let's switch it over to uh, Jackie. So here you can see some very basic information about Plattsburgh, some of our um, rankings and our application process, which is probably not dissimilar from everyone else's. The kinds of things you have to submit are there on the left. Um, and on the right is our cost of attendance. And uh, we, as a public institution, our tuition and fees are considered relatively low. Um, and we also give scholarships to every accepted international student. So if you are accepted, you will get at least a $7,500 award. Um, it's called the Global Diversity Award. We're trying to bring in as many camp uh, cultures as we can to campus. Um, and if you are an extraordinary student, you might get an additional $6,000. So that means our total bill cost for this year is somewhere between twenty-two dollars and $28,000, and that includes all of those line items. Uh, so when you compare us and, and uh, many of the institutions in New York, you will see that we are actually very reasonably priced, um, particularly in upstate New York, because you are living outside of a major urban area, which is where it can be quite expensive. Okay, Jody, can, what can you add about Paul Smith scholarships and special promotions? Sure, so you'll see our tuition and housing um, listed on the right there. And we are a private college, so we are a little more expensive than public colleges, but there's two really good bits of good news. First is all of our international students will also receive a scholarship in the amounts of $9,000 to $14,000. That's at the time of admission. So we use your grades for that. We don't require the SAT for scholarship. And so just based on your grades, you'll um, find out on your acceptance letter what your scholarship level is going to be. But why I think this whole conversation with the three of us is so significant is that we have partnerships together. So say, for instance, if you decide to go to Fulton Montgomery, Arlene School, and, two really good bits oh, and you complete there for two years, you get your associate degree, you can then transfer to Paul Smith's, and the tuition goes from $30,000 a year to $9,000 a year. And you also get the benefit of two different schools, two different experiences, um, living in somewhat similar areas, just a couple hours apart, but it's a great way to have um, a, a different experience and very, it makes it very affordable to get a private education and a private bachelor's degree. Okay, so let's uh, wrap it up, ladies, but before we go to questions, um, let's talk about what each of our campuses are doing in light of the COVID-19 pandemic that's currently going on in the world. Is Jody, do you want to go first? Sure. Jody, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure. And so we do have a dedicated web page that we've created where you can find all of the updates. We do plan to be open in the fall. We're looking at a, doing an early start where we will start a couple of weeks early and end a couple of weeks early um, in the fall. But on that dedicated web page, we've really filled it full of lots of ways to virtually connect with us. And so there's events and tours and photos. We do a lot of live chats and live Facebooks and there's videos for um, all the different majors that you can watch. You can find all of the updates um, and how we are cleaning campus, how we're going to set up living situations, how we're going to set up the cafeteria, smaller class sizes, um, even smaller than we already have and to accommodate and keep everybody um, safe on campus this year. Arlene? Yes, and we're doing similar things. Um, we do plan to be open as well, but health and safety, of course, are the top priority, not only for Fulton Montgomery, but all of our campuses. Um, a couple of things that we always have had a free online application, but I really want to stress that, that that's uh, a free, no obligation ab application. You can go on and you can apply. And if you change your mind and decide to just come in the spring instead, which would be a January start, that's totally fine. 
but we do mm -hmm. ask that you you think about it um and if you can't make it this fall you can take our online courses because we do have a goal uh, for every class that we offer on campus we will have an online uh comparable course so that students don't have to delay in their start of their education as i mentioned earlier in our dormitories we're going to have single bedrooms for every single student so that you can social distance and have some your own space um, and all of my colleagues we are accepting the duolingo english uh, test which is something that you can just download that free app and take the test from your own house uh, it's a low cost way of getting your english scores jackie yeah you've cut touched on many of the things i would say as well I think we're all very focused on making sure that students have access to studying this fall um, in whatever way they can, um, and also to being safe and healthy in our, in our um, campuses and in our communities. So just like you, we have a website um, where we list, it gets updated every day with the things that we're doing and the accommodations we're making. We're still in the planning process for fall. But I know that we're going to be very similar, offering full-time um, online study for students who can or must um, begin their studies that way. Um, and it's, you know, we're, I was talking to a biology professor today, and we have a really interesting idea that he's going to do Zoom synchronous um, presentations, but he's going to have uh, TAs working online with students and answering questions. That might even be a better <laughs> learning environment than sitting in the class when you don't want to raise your hand and ask a question. You can do so right in the chat. So I think we're all very committed to making sure that students have the best educational, social, cultural experience that they can have on our campuses. Um, and we are doing everything we can to accommodate them doing that this fall. Um, and even with the circumstances we have now. Well, this is an opportunity where we can review the questions. Jackie, are you able to see the questions that students might post? I post? am. I am. And um, some of them we've already answered. A lot of students have been talking about sort of the cultural enrichment of studying away or studying abroad. Um, do either of you want to reflect on sort of that cultural change that might happen among students in your in you know working with international students? Talk about that sort of the cultural aspects of studying away. Okay, well, I'm gonna jump in real quick and then uh, you guys can, can follow up if you wish. It is a big change. Um, obviously, you're, you're away from your family and friends, even in these days where you can Zoom and you know, be on Facebook and uh, be in touch with your family very easily. It's a lot different than when I was a student and I went away to college, I didn't even, really talk to my parents until Thanksgiving, which was about three months after I started. So the world is much smaller in some ways because of the technology, but um, it is a still a big change, especially if you're coming from a culture where um, maybe you work, you work a lot in groups. And then in the United States, you know, intellectual property is your own and you're supposed to work independently sometimes. In some classes, they want you to work in groups, but in other cases, they really want to see what you are able to produce yourself. Um, and so, you know, just going to college is a big, big change. I know that my own children are college students right now. And, you know, it's different from high school. It's different from the teacher always choosing you and asking a question in class. Instead, the focus is on you being an active learner. So you have to raise those questions to the professor and you have to really be prepared, read your work, read your, your textbook or your assignments and come to the lecture ready to participate and be active. And at a, I think I can speak for all of our campuses because we are small or medium sized um, campuses that our professors love love their students and they really want to get to know them and so they'll encourage them to come to their offices and talk about and follow up and if you had a question and you were confused you can say to your professor hey um can i come to your office hour this afternoon i really want to get clear before tomorrow's lecture and just kind of uh make sure i understand it 
And so that's something that I think is a huge difference in the United States is that faculty members and students are really partners in the learning experience. Right. I'd like to add on to that a little bit. <clears throat> I think, you know, when everyone comes to college, whether it's domestic students or international, it's kind of the great equalizer. Everybody comes in scared and nervous and unsure about what to expect. And we get that. We get it and we do a lot of planning to help ease some of that anxiety. There's a lot of icebreakers and small groups to get to know one another. There's a lot of sharing and events and those continue throughout the year. And so um, they continue out the year, throughout the year for the entire campus, but also for international students specifically. And so most colleges are going to have a dedicated international office. They're going to have international support just for your specific needs and um, and sometimes it's just a place to talk and and ask questions and especially cultural questions of things you're not sure of but I think the beauty of the US college system is that it is it is typically residential and um, and you're all living together and this is typically where you're going to meet the best friends that you're going to keep the rest of your life it's where you're going to make the habits that stay with you for the rest of your life and so we really think about that we think about your experience as a human being beyond the academics and and we build a lot into your experience to support you as a person so you know there's health services there are mental health services there are lots of fun activities there are study services and we really are trying to support the whole person and um, and put everything in place it's going to be an adjustment the time difference, the food, um, the language, the different learning styles, uh, but there's a lot of support. There's a lot of support for you and, and a lot of excitement for what you bring to campus and your perspective. And, um, and usually international students have a little bit of a cool factor. They're very welcomed and, mm -hmm. and typically make friends really quickly. And like, and like Jackie said, often pick up and take leadership roles once they're comfortable. And I think that international international students in general that you want to leave your country at this age and go across the world and study somewhere says a lot about you and and you're brave and um, and it's bold and so trust trust it because if you have that instinct to want to do that then you're going to do fine I agree <laughs> so one of the other questions was about um, scholarships, as often it is. Um, a student had a question about getting a scholarship from a particular country. Now at Plattsburgh, our scholarships are not based on country of origin. They're based on other criteria, but whether you're from one country or another country, it, that, it doesn't matter. Um, right. Can you talk about it? what are the criteria for your scholarships? So at Paul Ooh. Smith, we're looking just at your grade point average. So we're looking at your transcripts. And when you send those to us, we have a computer system we put that all into, and I give it a US equivalent. And so um, based on that US equivalent grade point average is how we base that scholarship. And that is the only thing we base it on. And then every year you can continue to get that scholarship as long as you maintain good academic progress. So you have to maintain a certain GPA, not the same one you needed to get in, um, to get the scholarship, but you have to maintain good grades to keep it. Arlene. And our scholarships, yeah, our scholarships are for every student as well. We, we don't um, look at your country of origin when assigning those. They're just given to each student. Um, but I do want to encourage students to check with their local Education USA offices in their home countries mm -hmm. because there may be scholarships available that we're not aware of at this point that you may be able to access. Good advice. So um, the last question I see that I think uh, would be of general value and interest is, so students are, if they're interested in post baccalaureate, so they, they finish their bachelor's and, or they wanna go on for a PhD or a master's. How does that start at your institution? Do you, do you have a fair amount of students who are doing that? What's the next step from your places to get to that point? 
Yeah, at Paul Smith's, we definitely do. It's something that we're actually known for, is getting our students into really good master's, PhD programs, working with you to try to get fellowships. And so most schools, I think I can speak for all of us, that we have a career service office, and you really start working with them heavily your final year of college. And this is where you can start researching and looking at your future plans, whether it's trying to find a job um, right out of school or going into graduate school. And so also I would say, uh, at least speaking from the point of small and medium sized schools, Oftentimes, you're going to have that really close relationship with your faculty members. A lot yeah. of times your advisor, your academic advisor will be a faculty member, and they're an awesome resource. Um, they know all of the schools that have the best programs for what you've been studying. They have wonderful connections. And so it really is a group effort once you kind of know what your goals are. If you want to go forward, then the school's going to help you through that whole process. Yeah. And I just want to chip in, you know, we are the first two years of the bachelor degree program at community colleges. So it's a little early yet. You may not have identified your goals uh, during uh, the first two years of your education. But if you have, you can certainly work with our transfer counselor as well and then continue that on when you transfer to a four year school like Paul Smith or SUNY Plattsburgh. Um, but it is a, a great opportunity for students to explore different careers and that is what our career center will help you with as well yep i would agree on um, with all the things you said um and starting we you know uh, we encourage our freshmen to start working with the career development center um to really start focusing on what your ultimate goals are and then sort of working back and they'll help you with also graduate school but else you know graduate school or work experiences, even internships. That's where you would go to find out about internships. Mm -hmm. So if I could you know, finish with one piece of advice, it would be that um, don't wait until you're a senior to visit the Career Development Center. Um, go there from you know, the second week, start building a resume, start building your plans so that you're, when you get there, you're ready to go. Yeah. Well, so those, yeah, those seem to be most of the good questions that we should answer, yes. Yes, so we will look at the, the questions later and reply if we've missed anything tonight. But um, this is our last slide, so please do take a screenshot of the information. Go visit our websites, contact each of us for more information. Um, but we just wanna thank you very much for attending our, our webinar and we hope to see your application soon. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for being here. Have a good night. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was a little stressful. Sorry, people. I don't know what happened. So we're, we're off? No, I think we are still recording live. There we go. We're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Whoa. That, it says we're still recording. No, uh, that's recording, but oh, not. Oh, says this video. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah this video's ended, ended. Okay. Here, I can stop. I, I should be able to stop recording that as well. Okay. I'm just going.